And we're live. Welcome to Bybit Fight Club, everybody. Welcome to the stream. My name is Brandon. I'm here with Jordan today yet again. This is our fourth Bybit Fight Club live stream. It's going to be another exciting one. We're going to be talking about lots of great stuff. The Silvergate and SVB mess. Uh, we're going to be talking about how Circle got entangled with that in USDC. I'm sure everybody's been following along with that. But if not, we will be covering that completely. Uh, we'll be getting into a little bit of the economic news for the week, as well as some of the crypto news that's been affecting our crypto prices. And then we're going to get into that live trading that you guys know and love. We're going to be looking at some of those chart and pair suggestions. Thanks to Jordan over here. Uh, and then finally, we're going to be doing that merch raffle yet again. And then if you miss that, if you don't happen to win after the stream, we will be doing yet another uh, bonus giveaway. So thanks for joining. And Jordan, if you want to say hello. What's up? What's up, Bybit fam? Happy to be here. Very excited. I'm actually currently at a Blockchain Africa conference in Johannesburg in Santon. So I am just on fire. I've listened to hours and hours of the most exceptional talks over the last two days and lovely interviews, met new affiliates. We've got brand new affiliates. So yeah, I'm on fire and I'm ready for this. Let's go. Very exciting. It's great to have you again, Jordan. So let's get straight into the SVB and Silvergate Bank news, because this is really the news of the month, uh, not only for crypto, but for all markets. Uh, this is really what everything's uh, hinging on at the moment. Uh, in terms of those micro and some macro moves, uh, especially as we get into the, the latter half of our stream, we're going to be talking about some of those um, effects that we may see in terms of macro. But let's go ahead and jump into the Silvergate and SVB. If we want to call it a mess, we can call it a scandal. Uh, no matter what, it's been uh, quite a crazy ride. So I'm going to start with the high level, both Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank. I'm going to refer to it as SVB for the rest of this. For banks that service the crypto industry and venture capital funded startups, they're some of the few banks in the United States that service the crypto industry. As we know, crypto in the United States is very specific in terms of regulation. So finding banks that are willing to work with crypto companies that are willing to work with exchanges and funds is hard. And so there are only a few of them. Uh, Silvergate Bank and Silicon Valley Bank were some of the biggest. I believe uh, Silvergate Bank uh, was ranked in the top 20 in terms of banks in the United States as well. Uh, we've got economic and financial conditions that led to the declining deposits and rising cash withdrawals that resulted in a classic bank run on Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank. So that's the high level explanation. We're gonna, really going to get into it because that's a little bit too simplified. But basically declining deposits. So you have depositors, people that are putting their money into the bank to hold on to and rising cash withdrawals, people requesting to pull those deposits out pull their cash out of the bank. You can think of it as going down the street to your local bank and depositing versus withdrawing. We're seeing way too many cash withdrawals versus the amount of deposits resulting in what we call a bank run. Uh, so you can think about the Great Depression where people were pulling money out of their bank and there wasn't enough money there uh, because the fractional reserve system, uh, which we can get into in just a minute, but really it means that banks only have to hold on to 10% of the cash uh, that they're actually holding on to. So if they've got a billion of deposits, they only need to hold on to 100 million in cash. For some banks, for larger banks, it can be even less than that. Uh, but the lowest amount is 10%. With that other money, they can invest. And that's what we saw both Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank doing. So when the demand for cash withdrawals drew high enough, both Silvergate and SVB had to sell assets at a substantial loss. So the assets they're holding on to are those 90, 95% of holdings that they're currently investing with. Silvergate booked a 1 billion US dollar loss in Q4 of 2022, and SVB lost close to 1.8 billion. So they're booking huge losses at the end of last year. Most of these liquidations were made up of T bonds or US short term treasury bonds. So they're holding on to 95% of their depositor money in T bonds. They're trying to make a little bit of extra cash. A little bit of investment cash on that on those deposits that they're, they're not holding as actual cash. So because most people won't be going to the bank and pulling out 100% of their funds, they're going to be holding it in the bank. They don't need to hold on to 100% of depositors' cash, and they can try to make a little bit of money uh, on. Uh, they're basically making a bet that uh, depositors won't come and try to withdraw all their money, so they can invest with a little bit of that net. 
So the most recent pressure came from the Fed rate hikes. This is really one of the big catalysts. Rising interest rates resulted in the issuance of new T-bonds at higher rates, which lowered the market value of the lower yield pre-hike T-bonds uh, these banks were holding as collateral. So Silvergate Bank and uh, SVB, they're both holding on to T-bonds from, let's say, the past three months. And they're making, let's say, two, three, four percent, uh, depending on when they got them, if they're longer term or if they're shorter term. And then the Fed rate hikes come along and new T-bonds are released according to those new higher rates. And the new T-bonds are making more money than the old T-bonds that SVB and Silvergate Bank are currently holding on to. And so the market goes ahead and decides we want to pump up or not pump up. We want to increase the value, the new market value for those old T-bonds is going to be lower. And the new T-bonds with those premium preferred rates is going to be premium. It's going to be higher. So they're old, what they're holding on to for 95%, 90-95% of their deposits is going down in value. At the same time, they've got people coming to the bank asking for their money. So they've got less deposits. So they've got less cash on hand. They've got more withdrawal requests, more people trying to take their money out. And so to accommodate for those withdrawal requests, they have to sell some of their investment sides of so some of that 95% of their holdings that they're holding as T-bonds. They have to sell those off at a loss. They end up booking a loss for Q4 of 2020, uh, 2022. So from there, we have the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation ordering the shutdown of SVB on March 10th, ordering the FDIC as receiver. So basically, we see a domino effect where withdrawals are continually higher than deposits, and both banks end up having to liquidate or shut down over time. One was voluntary, one was not voluntary. Uh, for Silvergate, they saw a, a voluntary wind down and liquidation on March 8th, but for SVB, it was ordered by the California Department of Financial Protection Innovation and the FDIC as the receiver. So all insured depositors of Silicon Valley Bank would have access to their insured deposits by Monday, February 13th. And we actually have seen this, which is great news. It is worth noting that investors in the business itself are not covered by FDIC insurance. So if you ever heard of FDIC insurance, if you go to uh, a bank in the United States, your visit, there is a $250,000 coverage uh, per depositor. So let's say you have 50,000 in the bank and the bank goes li uh, liquid you have that 50,000 50, that you can claim from the FDIC. They act as insurance for your deposits. But if you're investing as the bank in terms of if you're an institution, you're not, you don't just have deposits, but you're actually investing in the profitability of the bank. You're not covered by the FDIC. So that's the general story of how Silvergate and SVB went down and some of the catalysts. Um, some of the macro catalysts as well, as well as some of the catalysts in terms of the structure of the bank. But how were Circle and USDC entangled with these banks? Why did we see USDC depeg after we saw the entire mess uh, with these two banks? In a report released by Deloitte, which is an independent auditing firm on behalf of Circle or USDC's is issuer on March 2nd, they revealed that Silvergate Bank and SVP, SVB were two of their six banking partners used for managing the 25% of the USDC reserves held in cash. So out of the 43 billion or so of USDC that is, uh, has been issued by Circle, 25% of those reserves, well, 100% of USDC uh, is backed by reserves in terms of Circle's funds. US 25% is held in cash, 75% of that reserve is held in T-bonds and managed by BlackRock through the Circle Reserve Fund. So 25% in cash, 75% in T-bonds, kind of a similar situation to those banks, except it's a lot more in cash, 25% uh, as opposed to maybe 5 to 10%. So on March for, uh, 4th, Circle denied any current exposure to Silvergate. So everybody's calling them out. Everybody's saying, what's going to happen if uh, you don't get your money back. Is USDC going to go down? Are they going to have any backing in terms of the cash side? How much of that 25% is held in Silvergate and SVB versus those four other banking partners? People were getting worried. Um, on the fourth, Circle denied exposure to Silvergate, which is a great sign. They claim to have transferred the small percentage 
of USDC reserve deposits held to other banks. So some of their other banking partners they felt were safer, um, which I believe everybody believes. Uh, on March 13th, the 3.3 USDC, uh, 3.3 billion dollars worth of USDC reserve deposits held at SVB were made fully available and transferred to other banks. So before we were talking about whenever uh, the Federal Department or the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation shut down SVB on March 10th, the, the uh, deposits would be made available on the 13th. On the 13th, Circle got their deposits. They got $3.3 billion worth and then transferred that to other banks as well. So at this point, we are all in the clear. We've got the money that was held at SVB, the money that was sold, held at Silvergate being transferred to other banks, and Circle is officially clear of any debt to these banks. But USDC was still affected, especially on March 11th. So in this time between when there was news and tons of FUD circling the Silvergate and SVB shutdown and Circle's involvement before Circle got a chance uh, to get their reserve deposit back from SVB, uh, USDC experienced a depegging. Depegging is whenever a, a stable coin uh, depegs from $1 flat when stable coins are, are pegged to the dollar. And a major sell-off due, due to, con sorry, yeah, no, just for the newbies. So a stable coin is a coin that is pegged one to one to another asset, like a currency. So like the dollar, a stable coin, uh, like a like a USDT or USDC, is pegged to the price of the US dollar, but it exists on the blockchain. So there are a lot of benefits. Absolutely. Um, so what price did USDT USDC excuse me fall to? Uh, this is the fun part. Uh, if you are a trader and an arbitrage trader, especially not so fun if you're holding USDC and you need, needed that money at the moment. Um, so on Kraken, it fell to 87 cents. We usually don't hmm. see if we see a depegging. Uh, we usually see minor fluctuations either above or below uh, major stable coins like USDT. Whenever we see market events like this or any major market events, uh, whereas there's a large sell off or uh, a large peak or anything. Uh, we usually see a little bit of fluctuation. We might see it go to 1.000501 or 9.999999. We saw USDC on Kraken fall to 87 cents and on Coinbase fall to 84 cents. So if you wanted to sell off your USDC, if you were worried about USDC going down because of the contagion, you had to sell it for 84 cents on the dollar on Coinbase on March 11th. But on Bitstamp, if you are an, an unfortunate holder of USDC on Bitstamp and for some reason you couldn't trade or you couldn't move it to Kraken or Coinbase or any other exchange, you had to sell it off for 12 cents at the absolute trough. And this is not uh, the first time. Look at this chart. It actually depegged on Kraken to 85 cents on the 19th of April 2021. And it just took a bit of time for the trust to return. That's all. It has. Look, it's been depegging. Like constantly, it's not exactly stable. And you know what? It's not, none of these stable coins are actually a true store of wealth yet. And yeah, that's why you have to be serious about diversification because the fact is that these stable, stable coins are still being built. But I just want to be very clear on one thing because I learned a lot about it at this conference. And what we need to understand is that this actual de-pegging that happened to USDC is a result of a fiat, so a traditional banking contagion. In the traditional economy, you know, the regular fiat economy, uh, like, you know, people withdrawing their money from banks because of so much money printing, because of so much infl inflation, the banks can't keep up and there's no reserves there for the other people who need to withdraw their money. And just because, yes, stable coins are still quite reliant on the fiat banking system, we did see a DPEG, but we need to understand, first of all, that it's very resilient. It came back within the the, as soon as the banking opened on the Monday, basically all of those orders were filled and it repegged instantly. So it's very resilient. And we also need to understand the trust. I mean, okay, maybe you weren't in crypto in 2021, but you still should have done the research to understand that the USDC that you're holding here depegged very recently and was very likely to depeg again. Yes, these pegs are getting lighter, but we need to understand that this is a fault of the banking system and it shouldn't cause fight within crypto. If anything, it's, a, it's an actual use case for these stable coins to be less connected to the traditional fiat banking system. So yeah, that's my two cents on it. Absolutely. I think the, the less we see, um, not necessarily contagion, but a link between um, the stable coins and their, any type of fluctuation within uh, an asset that's backing the reserves, 
Uh, so the reason we see the, the this DPEG, the reason we see this fluctuation, it all goes back to those T-bonds, uh, the T-bonds that uh, both the bank and so, uh, Circle were holding, uh, not necessarily on Circle's side because they're very short term. So they've got some, some preference on that side. But in terms of the banks, um, we see these fluctuations. We see this inability to pay uh, those depositors that are trying to withdraw because of that fluctuation uh, in the underlying asset, which is the T-bond and does... Uh, that, that fluctuation does stem from our, our economic move. So uh, just some last details uh, in case anybody's curious, traders and investors did end up fleeing to other stable coins. Um, some of note would be TUSD, uh, which ended up pumping to right around a dollar and three cents. LUSD uh, again to a dollar and three cents, and then back down to 95 cents, back up to a dollar. Uh, so we get a lot of volatility from these alternate stable coins that we're and seeing other than tonight, the majors. Yeah. Sorry, it's yeah, the correlation and the arbitrage opportunity. So look at this. USD, let's say USDC, USDT, dot P for perpetuals. Look, there's a Bybit pair. So you can trade. And, you know, some of my guys on the group, well done for being so on it. 100x short. 100x short, boom. 100x long, boom. You, so one stable coin against another that's busy depegging. You know, it technically it's arbitrage, but it's a straight derivatives leverage pair on Bybit. And you know what? Bybit only created this pair because they know that these coins are stable coins. At the moment, they are stable. They're not stable. So, yeah, just be aware and get into these opportunities. I mean, yes, it doesn't happen for a long time and then it happens. But, yeah, there are reason for these pairs because basically these coins fluctuate. And I do believe eventually there will be a lot more stable uh, yeah, as regulation bridges the gap between the fiat and the, the crypto industry. Absolutely. Well, that's pretty much all I have in terms of uh, USDC, Circle, Silvergate Bank, and SVB. Um, so we can talk about kind of what we eventually see as, uh, do we think any more stable coins will depeg? Do we think that the contagion is over in terms of Silvergate Bank and SVB? Um, do we think any other stable coins are, are or will be affected uh, by these moves? I think the contagion, yeah, will continue. We see it spreading through Europe now. Um, and that, yes, that might have effect uh, because of some of the reserves. But basically, because this happened, I think there's a lot of yeah, security measures going into place now. And yes, it's inevitable that more stable coins will depeg because, you know, we saw like you, you have an idea. You say, OK, here's an algorithmic stable coin. And it didn't work. And, you know, that's the industry that we're in right now. And you have to understand that these stable coins are young and there is a likelihood. And I was chatting to someone today who really you know, knows the stuff in the fiat industry. And basically the way that they work, is, it's really tough. It, it, it is the bank run situation because they are um, obviously backed by the actual USD reserves. So if people start pulling out and it does de-peg, you might actually get zero. Of your value out if you miss the de-pegging and these coins can go to zero like we saw uh the ust the luna coin went to zero and you know since then i i've diversified into many things and you can diversify into other assets you can diversify into various you know fiat avenues or you can also just decide okay maybe there is you know a good hedging against inflation reason for me to build a bitcoin position or an ethereum position but basically the name of the game is diversification because they all have their pros and cons and they all can fail. And yes, fiat is the most reliable, but we do fall prey to inflation. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, currency struggling against the larger economy and stuff like that. So, yeah, don't don't think you're in a, a super safe environment at any time with any of these. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think that's what it comes down to. I th think that can pretty easily bring us to another question, which is, how we saw Bitcoin and Ethereum and crypto in general act as uh, a little bit of a safe haven from some of the markets, we, uh, some of the moves we saw in TradFi uh, and general markets. This is, in my opinion, or at least from my perspective, something we haven't seen many times in the past. Usually when we do see uh, markets dumping, when we do see anything uh, in terms of macro, we see Bitcoin falling first or with a little bit of a lag because it is a speculative asset and crypto in general is a speculative asset. But this time we saw the reverse. We saw crypto pumping uh, during this time. What are, your, what are your thoughts on that, Jordan? 
Yeah, that's hugely bullish. I mean, I think, uh, you know, more and more people are starting to catch on. Adoption is happening. I mean, one of the statistics that blew my mind at this conference is like when you look at the developers on certain assets, like on Cardano or, or certain ecosystems, you know, like Polkadot or Avalanche, you'll see that over the last two years, the, you know, even now, say we're in a bear market, we've been in a bear market for a while, and the prices have been going down, market caps have been struggling. What has happened to the amount of development? It has doubled year after year, and it continues to double. So that means the amount of developers literally joining every day is crazy. And every year it doubles. And when we see that's basically a bullish divergence in some sense. And you, you'll see I was charting just now and I picked up a, a bearish divergence on the 15 minute. And basically what that means is a lack of momentum while prices are still going up. And this is what we see right now, a bullish divergence in terms of development, uh, adoption, gaining power before it really takes off. And it's just given me a lot more um, a kind of security and a, and a feeling. Of course, we never know if a bull market is or isn't going to come. But because of this mass adoption happening on the development side, developers finally understanding the pros of this blockchain. And I mean, I was speaking to South Africans today who are tokenizing assets here in South Africa, startups. I mean, Namibians who are starting startups, uh, the Central African Republic already tokenizing their natural resources. Everything is uh, taking the natural steps further while the bear market is happening. And you know what? In terms of timing, in terms of moving forward in our larger monthly time frame, super healthy. I mean, I think the, the fact that Bitcoin is pumping right now so much is, yeah, maybe not the healthiest thing. I do think we need a little bit more, you know, retracement down to like kind of better levels to get more of a monthly curve. Because I know, you know, how these markets work, accumulation, distribution, etc. And yeah, this is unhealthy. We're not looking for a V-shaped recovery quite yet because we haven't seen any of the real stages that we go through in a bear market. Depression, capitulation, etc. have just not happened. And if you think this is all the blood that is possible, you're very wrong. Uh, you can see I've got my 9,000 level there on this monthly chart. And yeah, this is liquidity holding us up. If this fails due to many things throughout the economy, you know, the banking contagion, yes, it's not crypto, but it can cause people to pull their money out of crypto because they're scared. And yeah, this 9,000 level is calling us. Of course, we have to break through all this liquidity, but I would not be surprised. And I'd be smiling because I have limit orders down there. I'm well positioned, you know, in stables uh, for the current bear climate. And it's all mapped out for me here. If we fail this liquidity, I'll even go heavier on my on my buys here and you know what a lot of my friends it sounds crazy but you can put limit orders on bitcoin down to one dollar and then as low as bitcoin goes so say you put one dollar at a limit order at every hundred dollars all the way down to one dollar as low as bitcoin ever goes you'll buy you'll buy the low and strategies like that long term uh let's look at this you know market trend that I have here, basically from all the way from $125 on Bitcoin, one trend line keeping us up. And yeah, I do believe we can fakey below it. And this is actually what I'm thinking is we're going to fakey below this trend line. And it's going to seem like everything's doom and gloom. But yeah, I do believe this trend line, very bullish trend line, very upward sloping. This is basically the trend line of an asset that has knocked everything out of the water. I mean, gold has been around for what, a thousand years. And, you know, it hasn't seen these kinds of increases. So I do believe that this kind of action might happen and then back up. And you know what? For me, yeah, that's hugely scary. We do have to go through the depression, more blood, etc. These kinds of fiat contagions are actually what's going to drive regulation, drive the bridging. And, yeah, it's a very exciting time for me because I know that in bear market times, that's when the major development happens. That's when the work happens. That's when you learn to trade. That's where you build your new portfolio, no matter how broken you got in the previous bear market. You learn your lessons. You do your work. And that's why we call it a crypto winter. You know, like in Berlin, in winter, Berlin's one of the most creative cities in the world. In winter, you don't see anyone. It's too cold. They're in the studios. They're working. In summer, they come out. They release their albums. They go release their art to the world. And it's the same thing in crypto. Uh, I do believe in a bull market in the future and not financial advice to go buy any crypto. But yeah, there are ways to position yourself nicely. So, I mean, my bot did 10 trades for me last night while I was asleep. And, you know, that's the kind of thing thinking long term through more bear market time. As long as we engulf where we are, for me, it's not difficult for Bitcoin to come back above 
this level, even if we go back down to 16,000, to 10,000, to 12,000. So any bot that I can you know, run to capture the volatility in these levels, I mean, I do have a long-term investment state of mind, and I do think that that's you know, <laughs> what a lot of us lack because it's, it's you know, if you ever want to try and make money too fast, you will get burnt and you have to learn certain levels of discipline. You have to respect the learning curve. You have to be patient. And yeah, um, I could talk on this. I could keep talking on this, but let's move through the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. At this time, I want to go ahead and open up the raffle because uh, I've, I've seen some people asking about it and we're getting to right around halfway through. So I'm going to drop the link uh, a few times in the chat. It's going to come from the official Bybit chat, uh, official Bybit channel. I'm going to drop it three times so that everybody can go ahead and join that. Go ahead and just type in, I believe, your YouTube name and your Discord name. Uh, and you can join the merch raffle. We're going to be releasing three. Uh, should we should we tell them what it is, Jordan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them. Yeah, three hoodies. Um, zip up hoodies just like this except it's got the bybit logo um a little bit bigger so it's a, a little bit different design but black zip up hoodie um from bybit we're gonna be releasing three of those giving them away at the end of the stream so make sure you go ahead and you click on that form it's dropped as a comment in the chat on youtube um enter your They're details awesome hoodies awesome awesome hoodies absolutely super comfortable um and if you don't win one of those, we will have a quiz after the stream again, uh, and you can earn, earn some bonuses from there. But I also want to say if anybody has trading setups that they'd like to drop in the Discord, now is the time as well, uh, and we can take a look at those. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and see if we see any. Uh, it looks like maybe... Yeah, drop your setups, couple. and please drop us a like, drop us some comments. I see there are com comments coming in here on the YouTube, so let me quickly go through some of them. Crypto Cloud, welcome. Ika, Kilo, awesome, awesome. Manuel, yo, the team is in the building. Talak, uh, don't be a silent observer. Come on, join in. Uh, don't be shy, those who are watching. JD, welcome, brother. FLT, Zulfami, Gibson, Nanu, Ooh, some new names. Olosan, Yonom, if you're new, let us know where you're trading from. Dinesh, Jordan looks like Jordan's brother. <laughs> Who's Jordan's brother? Uh, Jordan Long here is the best. Yes, yeah, so I got it tied up. Do I need to create Bybit ID for bonus? Yes, so please do create a Bybit account. Uh, if you need a link, let me know. Uh, you come to the South Africa group, drop me a link, uh, drop me a message. And I'll sort you out. I'll actually drop the South Africa group so you have my contact. Oh, we've and got I'll news in the Discord that Silicon Valley Bank has officially filed bankruptcy. Will drove drop that little nugget. Yeah, yeah, um, they did. They closed. Wow. So we've got a couple of requests. It looks like a lot of people talking about Ethereum. Some ETH USDT. Here's the perps. Um, we've got a request. Tuck. GPT. GPT, I saw that. Alejandra, Sarah, Catalyst, Sartak, Max. Uh, Sarah, what do you put for your YouTube number? You, uh, That's your YouTube ID or your YouTube, your channel name. Um, so yours would be Sarah M. Marshes. So just your name for when it says YouTube number. Well, yeah, so just some setups. be very aware because this 26,700 level, a lot of you saw me go back on my chart just now, but it is a significant resistance that we're coming up to. You see this red line I actually had drawn in, uh, not even from here, from way back. Um, so I am aware of this as resistance. I am positioned short, uh, even though I am profiting on the longs. But basically, when we see this kind of a structure, price coming down below a liquidity zone like this, giving us a beautiful level, coming up into a range again, and then smashing through that level. We just know that this level is going to give us trouble here. Uh, so yeah, just be, I mean, that's simple TA. So looking forward, that's exactly what's happening right now. We haven't come up to test that level yet. And now we are testing it. And it could very likely push us down. I think there is a bit of manipulation going on. There is some recovery happening. And, you know, a lot of liquidity is being released 
right now into crypto, mainly Bitcoin. And we are seeing, you know, this awesome pump. It is causing a lot of inflow, but just keep your eyes on the RSI Four hour ready to come down uh, in terms of momentum daily. There we go. There we go. Daily. Daily could continue to come higher while struggling against this trend. Slowly, slowly higher. And look at that. We're looking for a dump on the daily. So let me go into my trades. Brandon, what have you been up to? Let's hear about your trades. Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing is <laughs> sitting on your fingers. Is, yeah. Uh, I missed the, the Bitcoin rally last night. Um, and I'm sitting at right around plus let's see, 6.4%. I've really been focusing on Aptos, APT mm -hmm. uh, to USDT, um, trying to get familiar. Uh, that's something that I like to do is find at least one or two pairs that I am I prefer to trade that I can get familiar with um, and then specialize in those. So once I see kind of how it reacts to our moves from Bitcoin, um, I, I can trade it a lot better. I think that's uh, super rather than smart. jumping around too much. You know, like... Don't just start trading a coin. Get to know a coin. Get to know the fundamentals, how the coin reacts to those fundamentals, what the volatility is like on a coin. You should actually study a coin and research it for quite some time before you jump into it uh, because they all act differently. They all have a character. So, yeah, some very important advice there. And we can see that apt here is, is about to dump. I mean, it's struggling here on the daily. If, if Bitcoin dumps now, it's going to be a, a nice big move on apt. Um, but there is a possibility of a break above here and we can see what happens when app breaks above here. It's one of those charts that's easy because it's one trend line, a uh, relatively new coin doing very, very well. We can see these kinds of moves are exactly what we want to catch as a trader. So we try and figure out, you know, how do we go and catch these moves? And I mean, look at that. The volume profile is already giving us everything we need. It's a launch point. So if anything, we need consolidation back down to the launch point. And of course, our EMAs on this time frame very important. I'll make it simple for you. Five over the two hundred. Uh, let's just do this. Let's give me one second. There we go. Okay, fifty over two hundred. We'll keep our five hundred there as our trend. Inputs 200. Okay, there's no not enough information on the daily for the 200, but we can see that the 50 is giving us actually all we need. The pumps through the 50 are the longs, the pumps below are the shorts, and this is looking like a short to me. So what are you thinking, Brandon? I don't have anything right now. I'm currently out. Um, let me look at my chart. But in terms of act, yeah, yeah. What, what, what would you? Yeah, so I had I was looking at that major trend line down um from it looks like right around the 10th to the or uh, like beginning, a yeah i was looking at that uh traded that breakout and traded the rejections a little bit before that breakout um haven't caught too much of of the breakout itself but i i, I caught a little bit of that retracement okay so technically for a full target on this breakout you would be looking for kind of the top uh, let me just draw horizontal in there. I don't know if we like if you know if it's a breakout. Basically, what we're looking for in a true breakout is a lot of bullish momentum coming in here, which we did see. Um, but now, yeah, 50 is holding us up. But usually for a true breakout, we'd want an actual retest of the trend line. We'd want that. So it's not convincing me right now. And you know what? These little fake outs, um, yeah, they can be indicative of even bigger fake outs to the downside. So just be very careful there. And this is the line. I would say this major trend line, bullish above it, bearish below it in terms of bias. Right now it's interesting because on the daily, we are above the 50. So technically we're bullish on the EMAs. We're bearish behind the trend line. So if we're bullish above the EMA and the trend line, we good. If we come below, yeah, we'll be bearish below both. So it's actually quite nice because it is a very neutral stance right now and it could turn out you know, either direction. So this is a coin that you can keep your eyes on. And yeah, so let's take a look at my trades. And I, I would like some, some help with what I should take profit on. There were more, there were 12 just now, but take profits have been going off. So basically, let me show you what happened for me. If I go to the Bitcoin chart on the daily. So getting ready for Fight Club, I opened up a whole lot of shorts in this daily wick and I was holding on to them here and not taking profits. Uh, let me go down to the four hours so you can see. 
but basically I was in shorts on many altcoins as my group knows from here. Yeah, shorted, 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 uh, was making very nice money. And then when we came up to here, you know, I was like, okay, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be in these trades for the stream. Some of them like uh, liquidity is still in a lot in a very nice short. I think the woo and the magic are still in a short, but I just had to take profits on trades. I had to flip my bias. You know, that's what you have to do. You have to adapt. You have to think on your feet. So I did. Uh, I closed the trades in profit. I flipped my bias. And now, luckily, I am still in some trades that we can talk through. Uh, but basically, almost halfway to my 10,000 goal, 4,822 from the 1,000. So not doing bad. I uh, still got 100% win rate because my strategy is very low risk. I only enter on these kinds of wicks, you know, these RSI rhyming areas that we get, uh, which for me, they become pretty foolproof. Like here, we had an RSI, regular RSI rhyming with a stochastic. And look at that. I entered. I had my stop loss far enough. And now, 219% in profit because I trust. I trust in the RSI on these kinds of time frames. And you'll see it even happened on the other time frames. I will show you. Let me just clean this up. I'm just using a different keyboard today. Okay, and even now we can see the stochastic coming down, which is beautiful. We can see everything's kind of happening in my favor. These very tight EMAs are about to cross. This is my cross, my EMA cross five over 15. I think we had a little bit of a fakie to the upside. I'm waiting for the cross to the downside. I will then move my stop loss lower. And maybe I should take some profits off the table right now. So if there's any TA on the trades that I'm in currently, they are Magic, CFX, Ethereum, FTM, Hook, IMX, Liquidity, and XT, STX. The Liquidity is a really cool trade. So let me show you. Um, yeah, hasn't been listed for long. Uh, I, I really took advantage of this. Uh, I saw everything playing out. I mean, what I saw basically was regular stochastic creating a double top. I mean, regular RSI. Let me make this bigger. I entered the trade back here, obviously, and I entered it on the second top. There was a double top here on the RSI. And what's important to note is that RSI is double topping out while price action is doing the exact same thing going up. And when I see a shark fin, when you see a shark fin, it basically is a very fast divergence. Oh, this is a one hour chart, but when you see a shark fin, a bearish divergence occurred on the lower charts because there was a quick buy and there was a quick sell. And yeah, I often hop into trades on those shark fins because of my experience. Yes, so I hopped in the trade there. You can see exactly where my entry is. And yep, $64 in profit on a $20 trade, 300 and something percent. So let's not be too greedy. Uh, we are at, I mean, we're at resistance now. So this is a short, you know what? I'm going to leave it. Uh, let me ask, uh, where should the take profit be for this? Let me know if anyone is actually looking at liquidity. And basically, I'm just going to, I think, set a take profit here quickly at 2.48. And yeah, I'll just do a limit order for, let's say, I'll take 75% off the table. So I'll actually bring it a little bit up then. And we'll close it at 2.5. Confirm. There's my limit order. And you know what? I want profits. I want to take 75 off the table here. This has been an amazing trade. Let's not be greedy. And there it is. Take profit set for 75%. We'll let the rest uh, run. Look at the cross. One hour cross on the 5 over 15. That is no joke. So we're heading towards my take profit imminently. Let's see if there are any other beautiful trades here. The IMX is over 200%. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. So, you know, when you, <laughs> it shows that you really have to be adaptable in this market. Uh, here's my stop loss, but I actually, I shorted this and then I took profits and I longed it. I flipped my bias because that's what the indicators were telling me. All right, so my stop loss is there, but I need to take profit. Actually, looks like we're turning around um, on Bitcoin. Very likely, we're going to get a little bit of a retracement on Bitcoin now after this big pump today. So I'm going to bring my stop loss right up, but I'm also going to be cheeky. My stop loss is there for my full contracts. You can set a partial stop loss. My stop loss right now is for my full amount of contracts. We are still pumping on this asset. So 
you know, I don't want to only catch when we're coming down. I want to catch in the wicks. I want to catch at the top. So let's set a stop loss within that wick. And, you know, you can do this in a matter of seconds. You're accessing your trades on Bybit, uh, working with them, manipulating them. It becomes very quick and very easy. You just note the prices. Make sure you note them. So here we want our take profit. You just hover there and you see 1.4660. You come here, limit 75% of the contracts. Post only, always remember. 1.4660. Firm. Post only basically ensures that you enter the order book as a maker. It will not let you enter if you are within the spread of the market orders. But yeah, Bybit also has amazing liquidity. So you can actually bring your limits like straight down. Look at that. I can, I can, now that I'm in the order book, I can slide around the order book anywhere I want because it is only a, a couple hundred dollars or whatever. Uh, under a hundred dollars so yeah this is how we be cheeky this is how we catch the the take profits at the wicks and then we limit our risk uh, not even risk anymore uh, but we limit the risk of our unrealized profit remember when profits are unrealized they can disappear like that so you always have to take profits off the table okay so in terms of an indicator today we've done emas we've done uh fibonacci uh, what else do I use? Uh, what was the other indicator we did? Um, yeah, RSI, EMAs, Fibonacci's. Let's have a quick look at the parabolic SAR. How's that? Um, some of you might not know about this, but it is an absolutely a incredible indicator. So I'm going to take the EMA cross off so it's easy to see. And I'm going to add the parabolic SAR. And let me give a quick breakdown, if it's cool, uh, Brandon, of this indicator. Absolutely. Go for it. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the link for the raffle a few more times in the chat uh, so that if I believe we've already got 20 people, 24 people that have Lovely. entered, but if you haven't already, um, go ahead and, and enter your information and then like the video. That would be perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So the parabolic SAR was taught to me by my guru, I must say. Uh, the man who I owe my current expertise to. He's a Forex trader. He's been trading uh, Forex for 30 years. He's been in crypto for 10 years. Uh, he's a high leverage, high frequency trader. And he's a very inspirational man and a very down to earth guy. And before I met him, which was only <laughs> amazingly only one year ago, and he's taught me so much. But before I met him, I had not heard about this indicator. And I'm sure a lot of you haven't heard about this indicator, but it was one of his three major indicators for confluence on his 15 minute scalping strategy and he's an absolute beast he sculpts it's the exact same strategy that i use i learned it from him well not exact okay i tweaked it a bit but that's what happens you tweak your strategies but basically the parabolic sar is one of the three and he never enters a trade he never enters a trade unless all three are in confluence and he does use the 15 minute time frame but this is going to be a nice example for you on this time frame of how this indicator works Okay, so here we see uh, some crosses. You can change them to circles. You can change the color of them um, as you like. The crosses are perfect. I've changed them to white. I've made them quite big so I can see them. All right, so parabolic SAR stands for parabolic stop and reverse. Stop and reverse is what we know as a trend change, a change in trend. Here we see a stop and reverse. The price was coming down. We stopped and we started to reverse. This is exactly what you're looking for as a trader. So parabolic SAR helps you to understand mathematically, technically on the time frame that you're on, where in the parabola you are. And yes, it might sound very advanced, but it's absolutely beautiful. And let me show you how it works. So whenever you are above the dots, you are technically in an uptrend. Whenever you are below the dots, you are technically still going down. And as soon as you break them, you're in an up. When price action reaches the dot, the dots print on the other side. And on this hourly chart, on this asset, uh, which is extremely volatile, <clears throat> but we can see that parabolic SAR is very smooth. And it also helps us out with non-trading zones. So you'll learn this indicator, but when you see this, the parabolics are chopping in. We call it choppy. It chops into itself like an axe. And basically, that's a no trading zone because, yeah, you can be scalping this range, but it's too volatile. You'll just get stopped out. And in terms of swing trading, an actual reversal, an actual trend 
There's nothing there. As soon as you start to see smooth parabolic SAR, you're starting to enter into trends. So you're looking for a lot of prints. And this could have actually shown us that trends were coming because we had a lot of prints of this indicator underneath it. And here we can see uh, we turned around, we turned bearish. And until we touched the price action, we didn't go bullish. Here, obviously, a little bit of a no trading zone. But there, as entries, it's really helpful to know technically, mathematically, when the trend has changed. So I'll show you quickly on the 15 minute in conjunction with the rest of the indicators that we use in our 15 minute scalping strategy. So let me bring up the regular RSI. And we'll bring up our 15 over 5 EMA cross, uh, which is up to you. You can change you know, what you need. But this is like uncanny kind of stuff, basically, because yeah, this is an extremely clever strategy, first of all. So don't think that the strategy has not been backtested, etc., because it has been backtested over 5,000 trades. And here we see everything lining up for us basically so we see here rsi you know struggling at the bottom there's a rhyme here between stochastic and regular rsi so we're positioned for the long on the 15 minute already but we need our other um actual indicators so here we had the cross to the upside but we didn't get well here we had literally this was everything we need so we would have entered right here we had a cross here of the five over the 15 to the upside we had the parabolic sar changing that was loud. I just got a take profit go off in my ears. <laughs> but we had a cross to the upside. We had a parabolic SAR hit. We had the RSI in the right place. And, you know, that was even earlier. I didn't even enter the trade that early, but we could have had even a better trade on this 15 minute scalping strategy. And here we can see, yeah, it really works out. Ever since that parabolic SAR hit, you know, a little bit of a no trading zone here, but it's fine because we're in the trade. After that one, look, smooth. Smooth parabolic SAR. And then another beautiful thing about this indicator, I won't take too long, um, but you can use it to determine where your stop loss should sit. Because when price comes to, it's really, I'm getting ahead of myself, it's really useful for trailing stop. Because if I look here, on the 15 minute, here is price action, right? Here's my stop loss. Uh, here's the 15 EMA holding up the price. Uh, of course, we'd look for the cross to the downside. We haven't got the cross to the downside yet, 5 over 15. Uh, we did get the parabolic SAR hit, so we are technically going down on the 15 minute in terms of trend, uh, but we're very likely to come up here and touch it and change the trend again. But basically, if I would like to really you know, catch the stop, I would have set it here because technically when we hit this level, we change trend. And if you want to learn where to set your stop, all you do is you look at the volatility. And this indicator also helps you to measure volatility if you want to, say, enter a bot on a coin that would make trades every day. So you look at the candles, you look at the daily candles, you look at the volatility. This can help you with volatility on the 15 minute. So on the 15 minute, the volatility right now on this coin, 1.41. And then the parabolic SAR reversal is sitting at 1.43. So there we know the volatility measurement is about 20 cents. So if you set your trailing stop at 20 cents, you are likely to get your trailing stop hit as the trend reverses mathematically, technically on your time frame. So a very important indicator to learn to use within strategies on particular time frames. And there we go. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I, Actually, know I have a quick question. Understand. So because I've never used the parabolic star is for the, the stars that it displays on the chart, though that can move. So right now it's above our current bar that can move below. Is that correct? Within so what happens? Uh, what happens uh, for, the, for those who haven't um, used this at all? So every time a candle prints, a new parabolic star will will print. So here, because this candle has dumped, if we close this candle uh, fifteen minutes, oh, we've got another few minutes. But if we close this candle here, this next when another candle opens, uh, a cross will either print above or below. It won't print in the on the, the opposite direction. So here it won't print below until price action hits the top. But de depending on the movement in the previous candle is how far the next cross will print. And those crosses keep printing. <laughs> the magnet on here or something.
Those grasses basically keep printing until the price action hits them and there's a turnaround and it's very similar to the EMA. And we can see that often you get the confirmation with your EMAs at the same time, but it's running on an absolutely completely different mechanism. So it's actual confluence that you're getting when they rhyme, when, when they happen together. So yeah, as you can see for me, uh, it's become a pretty essential indicator. Um, yeah, and you can even trade the breakouts as long as you're getting smooth RSI. Uh, Trader Giants, who taught me this indicator, often says that if you see a no trading period like this, uh, where there's choppiness, rather just go next door. Go have tea with your neighbor. Go do whatever leisure activity you want to do. Go to the gym, etc. And just set an alert. You know, for, for a major trend line, or you can even on TradingView set your alerts or program them on Bybit through TradingView when you get a, a proper parabolic SAR movement. So here uh, we can see the resistance that we were looking for was right there. And yeah, as the alert went off, we could see that the parabolic SAR caught this trade way earlier than even the break of resistance. So as I've said many times before, I like to enter at extremes. And this is one of the indicators that can help you enter at those extremes. Look, look where it was broken. The parabolic SAR changed direction before the drop. Look at that. So you could have very comfortably added to your trade until this was hit and it wasn't hit. Very, very accurate indicator. Of course, lagging, but very, very cool, very accurate. So let me go into the YouTube chat and I'm going to go into the Discord now and just let me know if people are understanding uh, if people are new to the parabolic SAR, if I've explained it in a way that you can understand. Let's go back to this Bitcoin trade. Oh, my Bitcoin trade got closed out in profit. Very nice. So now we can look to a new Bitcoin trade. And please let me know if there are any setups because, yeah, I'd love to open some trades. Let's see what's happening with Bitcoin. We are now out. We are out. We've smashed our profits. Looks like we've gotten a couple requests for GPT. Yes. Um, we've got Sarthak has already closed an 11.5% trade. So look at this Same four hour uh, RSI on Bitcoin. Just look at that. What do we know about the rhyme that's happened here? What do we know about it? We know that it's brutal on the four hour. One day we know still has time to come up. Um, but even this, even this line, because the stochastic is rhyming, this could be death right down from this level. So let me open it short because why not? You know, so heavily in profit, we'll manage our risk. We're getting a wick. We're at major resistance. Uh, we must, of course, have a stop loss at the top of this wick. And if we get stopped, we get stopped. We're willing to lose that money. Always be aware of the money that you're willing to lose. Okay, so let's go cross 50x order by cost. 20 USDT, we're going to open on a market. Uh, we're going to sell short with a stop loss of 50%. We're going to risk $11, open the short, and we are in a trade. Because I am on very high leverage here, 50% stop loss is not even at the top of the wick. And you know what? I'm just going to leave it there because I only want to risk 50% in this trade. And this is a higher time frame. If we look at the four hour, we can see a beautiful double candle body. And what happens at double candle bodies? We get into nice trades. So there we go. At least we got to open one trade live so far. I'm going to go ahead and drop. We've got about, I'm going to cut off at the hour for the raffle form. So I'm gonna drop that form one last time uh, for anybody that's joining late. We've got, well, 35 entries so far. So make sure to go ahead and enter your Discord and your YouTube information, uh, your handles for both of those. Uh, and we'll raffle those off. We're raffling off three zip up hoodies um, by the end of the stream. So right at the end of the hour, we're gonna cut that off hard. Amazing. So parabolic SAR threatening to be hit here on the one hour. It's not just useful on the 15 minute. If we hit this parabolic SAR here, I might even add to my trade. Uh, we're looking for a cross of the EMAs here. Everything's starting to line up. Look at this. Yeah, we missed it on the hour, but it's coming down. It's coming down. This is nice. So luckily, sometimes, yep, live trading does line up. Let's see if this Bitcoin trade becomes a beast. We're already a dollar 
in profit. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. What are we opening? Please drop your setups in the Discord. And you know what we do? We give the bonuses for the setups that are good. So I'm opening up the Discord right now. Hey, we've got some, some bad actors in here. Let me quickly delete that message. Alrighty. What asset is that? Oh, that's Bitcoin. Close above and hold, then pump more. Close above and hold. So you're looking at the 24,000 level as support or a close above the 26.4. Lovely Lil Drav. Awesome. Lil Drav, give us a setup. Give us a setup, brother. I know you're always trading. Okay, GPT, let's have a look. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing setup happening here. So thank you guys for the GPT. Just remember that this, yeah, this RSI, it's doing very, very weird things. It doesn't look natural at all. So just be very careful with this coin. I mean, look, yeah, so little info. So if anything, you do want to chart this uh, somewhere where it was launched. So you, you know, earlier, so you get a little bit more info, but basically we can straight up trade this. It's so cool. But even since it's been listed on Bybit, uh, we've got some very like clear TA playing out. And this is just like a very strong asset, obviously. So so let me know if uh, who knows about this asset. They can give us any insights. But what this triangle shows us with a very nice wick at the bottom, and I mean, this is the kind of analysis the moon does. You know, this is extremely easy trading. And yeah, he usually trades the breakouts. I would not ever trade a breakout. Um, Yes, of course, you can trade a breakout of a trend like this, but you run the risk of a fake out uh, below, and that would actually give you a nicer entry, you know, for the next trade. Like, say say this is a fake out, and then we test the trend line, and then we have a real breakout. You don't want to get wrecked. You don't want to get wrecked there. So rather, let it break out. Let this break out. Wait for it to come below where you would have entered on the breakout. That's why these downward sloping trend lines are so profitable, and then you will get the boost. Why is that? Because resistance turns into support and look there's a horizontal support line there so yeah this coin's looking very very good for a breakout i would say depends of course on btc whether this is a breakout long or a breakout short but start to learn to trade the retests and yeah let me see so i wouldn't open a trade right now to be honest because on bybit this 15 minute RSI is like in a no trading zone. So I do appreciate it. Um, and let's quickly look at it on another exchange. Let's see like what's happening. Yeah, so extreme bullishness, extreme, extreme bullishness. And of course, be be wary, be wary of, uh, of anything you do on this coin. Because look how much room it has gone to the upside with no red candles on the daily, nothing. So this is just begging for a retracement at some point back down to major support. And yeah, that could mean that this little little weird indecisive doji, this green doji that we're getting, yeah, it could be the first. We could start getting our bearish candles. Um, so be aware of that. Let's go down the time frames a bit. <sighs> sure. So yeah, what we're seeing are a lot of people taking profits um, because of the pump and a lot of people also buying and still pushing this coin up. Probably a lot of automatic market makers involved and yeah, bearish divergences coming out all over the place. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to enter this trade right, right now, but it is very interesting and it is a little bit complex. But let me go into the Discord. Let's see what's happening. So Sartak is already 11% in the long Let's see, let's see, Sartak. So let's go back to the Bybit chart. Sartak, let me know what time frame you're trading this long on. And let me know what was the catalyst, like uh, what was the confluence? Why did you enter this trade? And yeah, very interesting. I mean, we are technically above the support right now, but we can slide down it. So I hope you entered on low margin, allowed yourself a little bit of room back down to this major support to add to your trade. Because if anything, yeah, look, I mean, I could see us easily finding this apex as a cluster, you know, uh, for a bounce. And it could also be that. So just manage your risk 
and yeah, limit your position size. Okay, so let's see, OPT for our, let's go on link, uh, IDO, GPT, IMX. All right, so I have an IMX trade open. Good short opportunity in GPT, I think. Bybit is first to bring GPT and derivatives. Interesting, OP has been really volatile. So let's check, let's check link and OP quickly. Uh, what was the opportunity on link there? Was it long? I'm not linky, I'm using a different keyboard. Okay. All right, so link has been pumping. Very nice, thank you for dropping this. So let's have a look, Bitcoin testing. Testing a little bit, so I'm gonna quickly add a little bit to my trade because we are above our entry. So basically you just add the USDT, you open the short and you saw my entry move up slightly and perfect, perfect because we are at our EMA resistance on the one hour. And we actually, it looks like we're breaking through it, but you know, you guys know how I trade. All right, so link. Oh yes, I wanna look at link here. I think it's even in my favorites. No. Oh. Okay, so this is what I like to see. Brilliant setups being dropped. So even now I wanna enter this on the one hour. Um, so just confirm for me that you are also thinking short. Yep, four hour looking short. 30 minute regular RSI. Yeah, so we could wait here. We could wait here on the 15 minute. Be patient, be a sniper. We see the five minute heading up. Basically what will happen is this five minute will reset um, as it does. And yeah, we could wait for that. Or we could enter now on low margin and add to our margin because the 15 minutes also very likely to reset properly on the stochastic. And we saw the rhyme happen there. So it could be down from here. So let's let's do it. Okay, so we're looking for a parabolic SAR hit on the on the 15 minutes. I would usually look for like you know, have my entries uh, requirements being hit, being hit. So let me teach you guys properly, guys and girls. And yeah, we are seeing a change in the parabolic SAR stop and reverse. We are now technically in a downtrend on our parabolic SAR in the 15 minute. Great sign. We haven't yet printed our crossing of the five over the 15. So technically scalping, I would usually wait for this, for these EMAs to cross because that's a, a sign of death in the momentum. The EMA is doing that. And what, what needs to happen here clearly is that the 15 minute needs to come up. Yeah, we need to have a proper cross and a breakdown. And yeah, like I say, we'll enter on low margin and we'll add to it, just like the Bitcoin trade that's happening now. Yep, we see, there we go. So things are starting to reset. But on the one hour, things are looking juicy. On the four hour, we might still have time here. So let's do it because this could easily turn into a wick. You know I love to enter on wicks. And yeah, when I enter, just um, to be safe. I do come to the five minute. So like right now, there's a candle happening on the five minute. And since I'm entering a short, I'll just wait for that candle to fail. So yeah, we'll enter 15x. Ice, uh, this is isolated. Is that hedge mode? Yeah, hedge mode. I want to go across. Let's limit. Let's limit it. There's a lot of newbies online. We'll use a 12.5x cross short we're starting to get a wick we're starting to get a wick rsi on the five minutes uh, stochastic still coming up regular indecisive and yeah this is how you trade you can wait um to see if this parabolic saw gets hits on the five minute if we do get a reversal on the five minute we could possibly wait longer even enter a conditional order for this because basically what we want on this short are these wicks we want a wick even on the five minute and that's when you know you're trading well. Yeah, and we're likely to get one here. So let's just enter this trade because that's what we're here to do. And you know what? If you're careful about how you enter your trade, you can always manage it. Like if we enter this trade on a $10, if it goes higher, we manage it. Uh, we add to it you know, because we got our... All right, so we're going to sell short with a stop loss of 50%. We're going to risk $6. 12.5x cross on hedge mode. 
open the short. There we go. There we go. Oh, that was a take profit. Oops. But no stress. We just come down to the link trade and we go to our trading stop. Uh, sorry, we go to our stop loss and we make sure that there's a stop loss there. All right, so let's go do some work on this Bitcoin trade because we see movement here. We see we're now, we now are in a $5 loss. And just like I said, enter on correctly positioned margin sizes because on this five minute chart, just like I said, look at this, we're waiting for the reset. So now I want to add to my trade, but I'm going to wait because I want to add, if I'm going to add anything more, I want to add at the ultimate level. So let's see, let's see. Um, and you know, because we're on cross, because this is such a low margin and we don't have a liquidation price, our liquidation is 130,000, which was very unlikely to hit. We can actually take our stop loss above the swing high if we want to. And then we must always understand risk to reward. So if we really want to know where our stop should be, where is our take profit? So let's go to the one hour chart. And it's so simple to look at where the take profits are. Uh, you know, first take profit will be, of course, you could use Fibonacci for this, and I would. But for the sake of being nice and quick, first take profit is at 25,882. Second take profit, and this is just using points of most resistance. Next take profit, 24,998. Next take profit, 23,722. And what we do here is we just open limit orders. So here we go. Um, where's that take profit? Okay, so there's no take profit set right now, which is perfect. We can easily see where our first one is, 25,882. So we go close and we see how many take profits we have. Let's say we want three take profits. So we need to split our contracts into three. And right now we won't be able to do that because we are on too little amount of contracts. Um, so what we'll do is wait, what's our margin? Okay. No, we are on a, okay. Beautiful. We're on a $30 position margin, so we can do it. We'll make it $10, $10, $10. We'll take $10 away um, off our margin in profit at the first take profit at 25,882. So we go 25,000 on a limit. 5,582. 5,582. And we want to actually take, um, you know, you can do the quantity. Basically, we could just take this quantity and divide it by three. But what's very useful is you can take different amounts at different levels. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take 25% off the table at the, at the first take profit. And I'll put my stop loss in a, uh, at a break even and that puts us ahead of the game uh, straight off the bat so there we go we've got and you can check how many contracts so there you can see that there's 0 0.11 contracts out of 0 0.43 which are going to be taken off the table at 25,582 and yeah you know I got that level wrong but you just drag it up you just drag it in the order book to the correct level and remember always take your profits before the bots always take your profits before the whales so just move your limits a little bit higher. Okay, and not to waste time, let me do this super quick. We'll take the rest of the profits at 24. I mean, I always like to leave something off the table. So we've already taken 25% off the table. Uh, now we can take, say, 50%. Um, and we can see... Uh, where is our next take profit here? Oh, 24988. 24988. And it actually works from the original contracts. So if I want to take 50% of the original contracts, there we go. My profit will be $31. And there we go. We have our next limit set. We also see that 22 contracts will be taken off, plus 11 contracts will be taken off. That equals. 33 contracts. There will still be 10 contracts. I will still have something on the table in this trade. And now I am relatively safe because we do have some kind of decent risk to reward. Yes, if we come down and hit this take profit, then hit the stop, 
there, it wouldn't be great. So I like to monitor my trades for a little while after entering them until my stops are at a break even. If I do want to travel, if I do want to go to the beach, do something like that, I will bring my stop loss down and just be uh, you know, more happy with taking a little loss. But as you saw, we added to our trade. Uh, we're getting pulled down by the EMA here. We're very close to the parabolic star in the one hour. Everything's looking good. And yeah, that's that. As soon as we're in profit, I will bring my stop into profit. And if you do have to travel, if you don't have access to the internet for the next 12 hours and you do want to maximize profits, you enter, you know it, the trailing stop. So you check. Basically, you should have only entered really once the parabolic star is hit. And then when the new parabolic star is printed, you check the distance. Like I showed you with the volatility, that's where you set your trailing stop. And then if Okay, if your stop loss gets hit, your stop loss gets hit. I usually set my trailing stop for the same um, point as my stop loss. And then if your trade goes well, of course, you, you have to be always ready to lose your stop loss. But if your trade goes well, your trailing stop will automatically go in profit. The only thing is it won't stop at a break even. You know, it, will, it will maximize. Um, so you have to learn to understand volatility. And working with trailing stop is a very nice exercise in learning volatility. All right, so let's quickly, we're almost done, um, but let's quickly go to the five minute because this shows us exactly now what's happening. And it looks, yeah, like we are getting, we need a reset of both of these five minute RSIs. And it's crazy. I mean, these RSIs can literally bounce, but once we get the rhyme, yeah, our short is a go. We're only uh, a negative $1 in profit. And yeah, we've got a nice risk to reward, reward ratio. And you know what? It's fun to look at the one-minute chart and make it clean. Take all your indicators off the one-minute chart. And look. Just try and understand the beauty of candles. Candles are an ancient thing. You know, they come from an abacus. And they tell us a story of emotion. And yeah, I love looking at naked charts. I love looking at the one-minute chart, especially when I'm in a trade. Because it tells us what people are thinking now, what people are doing now. And you can go to the order book. And just watch it. And just right, watch Jordan, it. I think we are actually going to do the raffle now. Yeah, let's, um, do it, let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my screen. Pull yours off. And I'm going to open up the random number generator. It looks like we have 40 entries. What? Let me present. Oh, yeah. All right. So from between entry two and entry 41. We're gonna do this three times. So first, uh, number 31, let's find number 31. That's going to be X doors or G jet guard. Congratulations for the first well, hoodie. Well done, brother. Congratulations, let's pull the second one. Second one is 28. So let's find 28 on our list. And that's going to be All Facts. Congratulations, All Facts on YouTube. And finally, the last one is 23. Let's find 23. That's going to be Nanu Bai. Congratulations, Nanu. Congratulations to all of our winners for winning the Bybit Zip Up Hoodie. Oh, sorry, I haven't. Let me show those real quick. Here are our winners Nanu Bai, All Facts, and G Gent Guard. Congratulations to everybody. Um, we will go ahead and reach out to you in the main chat. But if you didn't win, no problem. You can join the Discord, hang out in the Discord, and we will have a quiz after the stream a little bit later. Um, and you just have to answer a few questions about what happened during the stream. So if you're joining at the end, uh, go ahead and maybe rewatch the first half. You'll learn a lot about Silvergate and SVB. You'll learn a lot about Jordan's trading style and definitely uh, learn a lot about uh, some fantastic indicators and trading tips. But that's all we have for today. Thank you guys so much. Uh, please take this time to like the stream on YouTube. It helps us out a lot and allows us to give away more merch, just like the three hoodies we gave away today. Make sure to join next week and the week after that in order to get just so many more chances to win not only 
March, but also some bonuses. Uh, remember to hang out for that quiz. Uh, we will be dropping the actual time that that's happening in the Discord. So just hang out there uh, after the after the stream ends. But thank you guys so much, uh, Jordan. If you want to give your your famous goodbye. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I will be going through the Discord shortly to see if there's anything that I've missed. But wow, thank you so much for the turnout and the energy. I absolutely love it. And remember, always play from a position of power and strength. Use a stop loss and don't get wrecked. Thank you, everybody. See you in the communities. Have a lovely day further. Bye-bye. Thank you.